What's going on? Welcome to a very special video for Game Week 19. In today's video, we're going to talk about the free hit chip. I am on the brink of activating that chip after the Leeds and Liverpool, as well as the Watford and Wolves postponement. My team is down to its bare bones. There are question marks around Antonio. He has had COVID. Will he recover in time for the game against Southampton? Chelsea versus Aston Villa, that game is in some doubt as well. Although it looks like at this stage, that match will still go ahead. Anything can happen between now and the game week 19 deadline. Just to timestamp this, I am recording on Christmas Eve. So anything can change between now and the game week 19 deadline. But as things stand, I'm very much considering using my first free hit chip of the season. So what I'm going to do is show you my team as things stand, talk about the reasons why I'm thinking about the free hit, and then show you what a potential free hit team could look like in game week 19. And hopefully that will help you think through your own plans as to whether you activate the free hit chip or whether you just try and navigate 19 with your free transfers. But make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe if you're new around here. And let's get into the free hit video for game week 19. All right, before we have a look at my potential free hit chip for game week 19, I just wanted to show you how my team is currently set up for game week 19. Now, before the Leeds and Liverpool game, I was thinking about rolling a transfer potentially if the Villa Chelsea game went ahead and Antonio was good to go. I could have even traded in Josh King for Antonio, but with the news now that the Liverpool versus Leeds game has been postponed, you can see that I'm currently down to nine players starting in game week 19. And that is, of course, if the Chelsea Villa game goes ahead. If Phil Foden is out of timeout and he's back on the pitch and Antonio is playing as well. So worst case scenario, I'm probably down to Cancelo, Saka and Ramsdale, which would be three players. Now that's absolute worst case scenario. I don't think that is likely to happen. I think the most likely outcome is for the Chelsea versus Villa game to go ahead and for... Antonio to play. I cannot be sure whether Phil Foden will play in that game against Leicester. So probably down to seven or eight players in game week 19. That's kind of just on the brink of using a free hit. And that's the reason why I'm thinking about using the free hit and, and potentially waiting for some further updates prior to the 19 deadline. But having a look at my team your team might be in a similar position where you've got some Chelsea players, you've obviously got the Liverpool Leeds game being postponed, which means you're down to just a couple of players. And I think when you're in a position like this, there's every reason to consider playing the free hit. Now, prior to the Liverpool versus Leeds game being postponed, I was planning on using my free hit in game week 22. Now, let me tell you why that has changed. According to Ben Crellin and the people in the know on Twitter with regards to the TV schedule and all those types of things in terms of Premier League fixtures and how that works together... They're suggesting that it's highly likely that Liverpool get a double game week in game week 22. And in game week 22, they will be playing, if we just look at Jota's fixtures here, they've got Brentford in game week 22 at home, and then that postponed fixture against Leeds in game week 22. So Liverpool could have a double game week in 22 of Leeds and Brentford. Now that is really appetizing. And if we kind of go back to what Ben Crellin was saying about who could double in 22, if we just count the players I've got currently who could double, I've got Ramsdale, the three Chelsea guys, so that's four. Cancelo won't double in 22, neither will Foden. Salah will be at the African Cup of Nations. So Jota makes five, Saka six. Antonio, I don't think he will double in game week 22, although he plays Leeds in that match. So it's not a bad fixture for Antonio. West Ham are probably likely to have a double at some stage, but it's unclear whether that will be in game week 22. Watkins will double for Villa, that's seven. Josh King will eight. Trent will nine. Sissoko will 10. Not that Sissoko is a great player to have for a double, but he doubles nonetheless. So that's 10 players. I would likely want to play Cancelo and or Foden. So my team's looking quite good for game week 22. I don't think I need to use my free hit in 22. And that's the reason I'm thinking about using it now because I can probably make two transfers for free 
between now and 22, potentially three transfers. Bring in someone like Son for Salah. That gives me another double game week player. I could even bring in Ronaldo for Antonio if I downgrade elsewhere, and that would give me another double game week player in 22. So I'm pretty confident I can get a full 11 of doubling players, if not more, in game week 22. I don't want to use my bench boost then. I'm going to wait until later in the season. So I don't think I need to use my free hit in 22. And looking at my team right now, it's on the brink of a free hit in game week 19. And what I need to consider is if I'm going to use my free hit now, is it more advantageous for me to use my free hit in 19 or to wait for 22? And I've just counted that I can pretty comfortably get to 11 double game week players in 22. Right now, I'm down to about eight or nine players in game week 19. And I'm relying on Antonio being fit. I'm relying on Foden being out of timeout, as I've said. I'm relying on the Chelsea triple up against Villa. I don't think playing the free hit in 22 is more advantageous than playing it in game week 19. And that's why I'm very seriously considering playing it in game week 19. If Chelsea and Villa were postponed, if that game was postponed, I would 100% be free hitting in game week 19. If Antonio is not playing that game, then it's probably a 75 to 80% free hit in game week 19 and similar for Foden as well. So that's what my team currently looks like. Let's go ahead and see what my potential free hit team could look like in game week 19 if I make the call to go ahead and play that chip. All right, let's have a look at the potential free hit team in game week 19. Starting off in goals, we've got Ramsdale away to Norwich. I was thinking about going with David De Gea, but you still are cautious of effective ownership when you're playing the free hit. It would be really frustrating for me, who owns Ramsdale, to go to David De Gea, United concede a goal against Newcastle, which I think is more likely than Arsenal conceding against Norwich. Norwich haven't scored in their last four games. It would be really frustrating if I pick David De Gea and then Ramsdale goes and keeps a clean sheet. The Ramsdale effective ownership would be hurting me yet again. So I think it's probably a balancing act between swords and shields. You often hear that term used in FPL. Sword being picking players who you can attack with, players who will give you an advantage over the others. But shield, picking players who can also protect you. Picking players whose effective ownership is so high that if they scored points, they would hurt your overall rank. So that's the balancing act that I've got here in my free hit. And Ramsdale, I think he's a decent sword pick, but Right now, he's certainly more of a shield pick for me. And that's why I've got Ramsdale in goals away to Norwich. In defense, we've got Reese James, Cancelo, Regulon. This defense doesn't look too different to the defense that I've currently got. Of course, Reese James, Cancelo already in my team. Reese James is there right now because even if Chelsea concede a goal, which I think they probably will against Villa, he can get attacking returns. We saw the other day, he got max bonus despite conceding a goal against Everton. So Reese James can get returns even if Chelsea concede. Cancelo there, I think along with Trent, he's one of the best defenders in the game. And Regulon playing at home to Crystal Palace. Antonio Conte has really improved the Spurs defense. We know that Ryan Sessignon is out injured at the moment. So Regulon basically has that left wing, bo- left wing back role sewn up. And I think he offers points at both ends of the pitch. In midfield, we've got quite a big midfield. We've got Son as the vice captain. I've got Phil Foden there for now, only because I think if Foden starts that game against Leicester, he could do really well. Leicester's expected goals conceded in recent weeks and across the, the whole season has been quite poor. I think Leicester concede in that game against City. I think they concede a couple of goals as well. Remember, Leicester have just played in the Carabao Cup. They went to penalties against Liverpool. And now they're backing up playing City. And then just two days later, they're playing Liverpool. So tough kind of fixture run for Leicester. And I think it's really going to impact their squad I think City will do well in that game. And that's why I really want to have a City midfielder. On the free hit, I could go with a De Bruyne. I could go with a Gundogan. His minutes per expected goal involvement is quite high. Mares the same as well. But I've got Foden there because I think he will play that game. If there's any doubt about whether Foden does play or if it looks like he won't play, 
then I can easily switch Foden around for a Jack Grealish or a Gundogan. I'm tempted by a Mares or a Kevin De Bruyne. Just finding that extra little bit of money, I will need to make sacrifices elsewhere. So a City mid in my free hit is all but a guarantee. Who that City mid is right now, Foden leads the race, but it could change prior to the deadline if we get some news about who's going to start and, and who's going to potentially miss out versus Leicester. Martinelli there, he has the best expected goal involvement per 90 for Arsenal midfielders. He's also fairly explosive. He scored two goals in the game against Leeds. Apologies there. That should say that Martinelli is playing Norwich away in game week 19, but I think Martinelli is a great pick at just 5.3. He's my pick of the Arsenal midfielders. Jared Bowen, Southampton give up plenty of big chances. I think in the last four matches, they've given up 12 big chances, which is right up there with teams like Newcastle and Watford. So Southampton love giving up big chances. Jared Bowen, he's playing up front. He played up front the other day against Tottenham in the Carabao Cup with Antonio out with COVID. If Antonio misses out on that game, I think Bowen plays up front. And even if Antonio is back, Bowen can still do well. We've seen that in the game against Chelsea, for example. Both of Antonio and Bowen played, and Bowen did quite well. So I've got Bowen there. And it's also kind of a bit about spreading the risk. If games are postponed after the deadline, you don't want to have all your eggs in the City or Arsenal or or Tottenham basket, for example. Having a West Ham player or having a Southampton player or a Chelsea player or whoever it might be could be a good way just to protect yourself in case there's an unforeseen postponement. And then Marcus Rashford. I've got him there. He's potentially playing out of position up front in a two for Manchester United, playing away to Newcastle. Newcastle have the worst expected goals conceded in the league, particularly at home. I think there's something to be said about Newcastle at home trying to attack and please their fans and score goals. But when they do, they open themselves up to concede goals as well, particularly on the break. Rashford has done quite well historically against Newcastle. His pace is a real problem for them to deal with. They've got injuries at their back. And so I really want someone else from the Manchester United attack beyond or besides Cristiano Ronaldo, which a lot of managers who don't have the free hit this weekend will be playing Ronaldo up front. So it's good to have another United attacker there. There's no, I'm not really tempted by Sancho. Bruno Fernandes is probably just a little bit too expensive. And so that's why I've got Rashford there in midfield. And then up front, Ronaldo, as I was just saying, he would be my captain if I went for the free hit. And Lacazette, Norwich concede so many chances from the center of the pitch. Their defense opens up like the Red Sea. And Lacazette, I think, playing through the middle for Arsenal in this game could really benefit from that. So I've got Lacazette playing up front with Ronaldo. And on the free hit, one of the benefits of the free hit this game week is that you're able to build a bench. If you're playing the free hit, I definitely recommend having players on your bench who will play just in case of postponements. And try and have guys on your bench who are playing for teams other than the ones in your starting 11. So this is the bench that I've got. I've got Ben Davies playing at home to Crystal Palace. Ben Johnson there as well, 4.0, playing at home to Southampton. It's very likely he plays in that game. I've got Broya playing away to West Ham, 5.1. And Sanchez there, the backup goalkeeper from Brighton. I could make a couple of changes here, potentially get in a Tarek Lamptey instead of Davies if I wanted to spread the risk a little bit, or even look to get in a Burnley or Everton defender. But as things stand, Burnley and Everton looks to be one of the fixtures that's in doubt for game week 19. Now, this free hit team is not complete, it's not finished, and as I said, I'm not 100% sure that I am free hitting, although it is quite likely at this stage. The biggest question marks in this team are Foden, Bowen, and Rashford in midfield, and then I do still have some question marks around Reese James in defense. I like having Ronaldo there and Son, they're basically a lock in this team. It would be nice maybe to squeeze in a Harry Kane instead of a Lacazette or as well as a Lacazette and play three up front. In midfield, I'm thinking about Kevin De Bruyne or Mares in place of someone like Phil Foden or Rashford. The price points there are a little bit difficult to stretch that far. And in defense, I'm wondering whether going with the double Spurs defense as opposed to Reese James might give me that little bit of an advantage there, a little bit of an effective ownership advantage. 
For those managers who have just one Spurs defender, doubling up at home to Crystal Palace could be a shrewd move. So those are the questions I've got around the team at the moment. This is an initial draft and kind of the free hit team that I'm looking to go with. If the deadline was today, this is probably what I would go with. I think it's a good mixture of guaranteed starters and players who may not start, but even if they do, they have a really high ceiling. And then I've got the players on the bench who can come in in case any of these players don't start. But let me know in the comments below what you think of this free hit team. Are you going to play your free hit in game week 19? And what players are you thinking of picking in your free hit team? So thanks so much for watching. As always, go and follow me over on Twitter at FPL Inzaghi. I will be posting my final team on Twitter prior to the game week 19 deadline. I'll let you know over there whether I decide to play the free hit or just make a couple of transfers for a minus four. If I do make a couple of transfers and forego the free hit, it's very likely Ronaldo will come into my team and I will probably sell Mo Salah for either Martinelli or Jared Bowen to enable me to go from a Josh King up to Ronaldo. But Josh King, I'm pretty reluctant to sell him because it's likely that Watford will have a couple of double game weeks in the next few weeks. So I'm kind of keen to hold on to Josh King because he's going to be having all those doubles. But thanks so much for watching. As always, take care and I will see you in the next video.